Hi, Sarah here from Sarah Homfray Embroidery with another stitching video. So today we are going to look at embroidery stitches to fill in solid shapes. So in a previous video we've looked at stitches for open shapes and you can see those here, my little peacocks, and we did these stitches here. If you haven't seen that video yet you can check that out at the end of this one, we'll put a link up for that. Um, but in this video we are going to look at solid shapes, so we're going to work five stitches in the body of the peacock and show you how to fill in an area. If you want to have a go at this yourself we have got this little peacock design for free on our website for you to download so we'll put a link to that in the description below this video if you want to have a go yourself. So a nice easy stitch to start off with. Um, we've done this one lots of times before so do check out the stitch library if you want more information on how to do these individual stitches but I want to show you what it looks like when you fill in a solid shape. So we're going to do this rows of chain stitch and we're going to go round and round his body and it kind of gives him contours and gives us a chance to change colour if we want. So even though this is usually used as an outline stitch it is uh, really nice to fill in shapes if you just do rows and rows together. So I'm going to start down here, just done my little knot in my two starting stitches because this is sort of a place where you can hide an end if you need to because it's meeting another part here. So that's why I'm starting down here. If I start at the top it might be a bit noticeable. So going up and down in the same spot and I'm going to use my gold line as my design line. So I've made a loop coming up inside the loop. Just pull on that gently, not too tightly because you lose the shape of your chain. Back down inside that loop, form a second loop. So each loop's attached to the previous loop. Try and keep that distance nice and even so your stitches are the same size. So back down in the centre, make a loop up inside the loop. And just pull gently in the direction you're stitching to get a nice even tension on that. So I'm using stranded cottons or stranded floss for this and I've got three strands. You can experiment with how many strands you want to use, you don't have to use three, but I like three to do this kind of stitching with. And I'm just going to make as smooth a shape as possible around the body so he's got a nice even shape because the other rows will follow this row. So I'm just continuing to work my chain stitch, each one connected to the previous one. Following that line as neatly as I can. And then I'm going to work all the way around and then I'll show you how to put the next row in. So I've done my first row, I've gone all the way around. I'm coming in with the second colour now. And I'm actually going to start it in a different place. So if these starting finishing parts do show up they're not all in a big row together but I'm still starting down the bottom out of the way and I've changed my colour now so you can see what effect it has. You can do the same colour if you like and just rely on the texture but you want to make this a solid block of stitching so you need to go as closely as you can to that previous row so that there are no gaps and the fabric doesn't show through and you'll see from these little dots, that's where I've started and finished my um, stitching from the previous video from these. So we want to make sure those are covered up as well. So nice and close together with your row so we get a really nice solid bit of stitching. But otherwise exactly the same. Going the same way round so that my chain stitches lie in the same direction. You can go the other way if you want, you don't have to go this way round. You can go clockwise if you want to. And you'll see what happens when we get to the narrow part here and down the other side at his neck the stitches are going to meet. So I'll show you what happens when we get to that point. So for now I'm just going to run this stitch quickly around there and then I'll show you how to deal with the middle part. So I started my third row so don't be tempted to keep going around with the same colour. Actually finish the row and come in and start the row, the next row again as a separate row. Um, but I'm just getting to that little tight bottleneck at his neck, so it's called a bottleneck, and I'm just going to keep going all the way up into there because I can get one more row of stitching in just about. So I'm just going to keep going then we'll have to finish at the top and then come back down and start a separate row 
again so just keep filling in with the stitch if you need to do separate stitches then you do step separate stitches so the last chain there and then just to finish that off just going to stitch over it at the end just to anchor it so it doesn't come up and that's filled in the top but then I need to come back around here so I'm going to start again with a new row if you like here and then as if I've gone all the way around the shape so my stitches are still going in the right direction with all the others but I've just dealt with that little empty space at the top so just think logically about it embroidery is quite a logical subject just think how am I going to fill that in so just keep the stitch going as long as you can and start and stop your thread if you need to and the same will happen in the middle of this body as well probably probably get another row in and then I might just have to do a row at the middle don't try and work it out beforehand just let it tell you what it needs when you get there because so many things can change that you could do it again on another one and it would be different so just wait till you get there and deal with the situation when you're there And how are we doing for time on the clock? Three. <laughs> I don't want to count down. That's how long we've had or how long we've got left. Three, two. So I've changed colour again, I'm going to do a dark blue and now because I've got this little sharp point at the top this is a good place to start and finish your stitch. So I'm going to start up there now and I've started and finished with my little stitches here in that space in the middle because I know that's going to get covered up but if you want to you can start and finish on the back. A little end come through so I'll just cut that off. So yeah, you can just weave your stitch through on the back if you would rather, but I just find it easier to do it on the front as I got my frame in a clamp. But we're going to cover them up, so that's okay. And I've just gone darker as I've gone into the middle, just gives them a little bit of contour shape. Darker in the middle and lighter on the edge. So I think it'll be one row of this and then there'll be and one row up in the middle, I think it's going to happen. Stick nice and tight to that previous row so there's no gaps in there. What you could do with this stitch if you have got a gap, you can work these stitches individually. You can do detached chain stitch. We've got a few videos on that if you want to check that out. And you can just slip one chain stitch in the gap if you need to. So don't be taking rows out if you haven't <laughs> quite managed to cover it. Embroidery is very easy to fix when you know how, so just work one single stitch in the gap and nobody will know, I promise. So I'm getting to that top again, so I shall finish that, take my thread down over the end of that chain stitch to finish it off, and then come back up in that point. If you're not sure, it looks a little bit wide for one row, so I'm going to carry as on as it carry on as if I was going round it again, because I think I'll get one more turn in. So that's what I said about just wait till you get there to make the decision, because I think if I just go once down there, I'm going to get this gap. So I'm actually just going to do two rows. I'm going to stop that there. I'm not going to try and turn it. But I'm going to go back to the top and fill in there. So just keep the stitch going as long as you can to fill in the gap. So if you just think logically about it, it should all work out fine. So one more stitch in there. We've got that covered. There we go. 
down at the end to finish it off and I'll just weave that thread through the stitches on the back cut off the knot so you can see what that looks like there we go so that's three colours and that's a chain stitch filling so before I work my actual satin stitch I'm going to work a split stitch around this shape now you don't have to do this stage if you don't want to um, I do find it it makes the satin stitch a bit easier personally um, it just makes it a bit neater to work um, but if you're a neat worker anyway and if you've had a little bit of practice a bit more experience you can probably jump in without doing this and just take extra care but just working this split stitch around the edge will give me something to work my satin stitch over it just raises the edge up a little bit and makes it look a little bit more smooth so I quite like doing this stage but you don't have to if you don't want to and all I'm doing for this is using two strands of the colour that I'm going to be doing the satin stitch in. And I'm doing a forward stitch and just coming up in between splitting the stitch. Hence it's split stitch. And going as smoothly and neatly as I can around that edge to make a really nice shape because my satin stitch will follow this. If I don't do this part neatly, the rest won't be neat either. So I do find it's worth taking the time to do this. So I shall go all the way around with this and then we'll have a look at the actual satin stitch. So I've been all the way around the edge with my split stitch and you can see that makes a nice shape to work over and that just helped to even out my satin stitches. So I'm going to do the satin stitch now and I've got three strands of stranded cotton. I'm going to come quite high up on one side. You can choose which way you go, it doesn't matter. To start that side and I'm going to go right the way across. Now you can do satin stitch horizontally, it doesn't look really neat. The best way to get satin stitch neat is to do it on a slant. So that's a little tip for you. You can do it that way, but it's much nicer to go that way. I'll show you why in a second. So that's the angle I'm going to do. So the first one will set the angle for all the others. So I've come up on the outside of my split stitch and I've tucked that needle right in next to the split stitch on the opposite side so we're working outside to outside so we will cover all of the split stitch just going to pull that down now the trick with this is to work in the right direction so i'm going to work upwards first and i'm going to come up above it there and then when i go down on this side now i'm just going to angle the needle towards that last stitch so i'm not going straight down like that going to angle towards it right up close to that split stitch edge though and that will just bring that thread underneath that previous one and you get nice tight rows you'll get really good coverage of your underneath fabric you won't see that so I'm coming up again on this side nice and tight to my split stitch not too close on this side and I'm just coming straight up this side and I'm going to angle the needle towards it that side and that will keep that nice angle all the way up. If I go the other way, if I come up on the left hand side here and go down on the right, what will happen is my stitches will start to straighten out and they'll end up horizontal. So if that's happening, you're probably coming up and down on the wrong side. This way you get to keep, maintain, get to keep that really nice sharp angle and that's what makes the edges look really smooth if you're doing it horizontally horizontally you can't get that effect and it looks a little bit gappy so that's why it's better to do it diagonally so that you can do that movement of that needle right up nice and close underneath that previous stitch almost you get really nice good coverage so i'm just going to carry on all the way up keeping nice and tight tucking that in and then I'll show you what happens when we get to the top so I've just got to the top I'm going to do the last few stitches so don't panic when you get to the top you just have to keep that satin stitch going but the stitches will now be very short so I'm still going up tight against this side of the split stitch one more in there very short one there just keep that angle going now you can see I've got a little bit of a gap on that side that's fine we can just put another stitch in over the top so just work out where that needs to be and back in over here 
and go over the top. Put another stitch in, it's come unthreaded. But it is really easy to fix, so if you do have a bit of a gap, don't worry, don't take it out, just put another stitch in. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to turn that over and finish that on the back, but I want to show you what um, you can do with this because it's one solid block of colour at the moment. But we're going to put another colour in the bottom, so I want to show you how to mix the two colours together. So I'm going to do a few more stitches in this colour before I bring in the next colour, but the really important thing now is we're working down. So we started here on the right hand side and worked up. Now we're going to work down, I'm going to swap sides so that I've still got that sharp angle and I can lean my needle underneath it. If I carry on on the same side and come down it will straighten out and I'll be horizontal by the time I get to the bottom. So when you stop and come the other way of where you started, swap sides. So going into that angle there, coming up straight up on this side against that split stitch edge. Angle the needle in towards the previous stitch. And keep that nice sharp angle on it. So what I'm going to do is put that on the top. I'm going to park that there. Bring in my other colour. Now I've left that one on the top so it doesn't get in a big knot underneath. Um, I've seen people try all sorts of tricks so that they don't have to take it back through to the back again, but it will get in a big knot. So just leave it on the top where you can see what it's doing and it's not getting tangled up. So bring in my dark colour in now. Exactly the same as before, angle that needle in. Now the trick, so this doesn't look too blocky, like a block of one colour and a block of another, try to blend nicely from one to the other, is I'm just going to do one stitch in that dark and then bring in that lighter one again. So I've just taken it back through to the back, I'll show you how we do that in a minute, and put in another stitch. So we'll go two in this colour, now it might seem a pain changing the needle all the time, but the more you do it, the more of a nice blend you'll get. So it is worth the effort. And then to get that back down that hole, I'm just going to pull it back on itself and that opens the hole up and the needle goes back down the same hole. If it doesn't go back down the same hole, don't worry, just carry on. You've made a little extra stitch. But as long as it's nearby, it won't matter. Don't park it outside the shape anywhere. Park it close by. So I've done one dark, two lights, one dark, back up to the top, one light, part that one. Take this one back down. So one dark, two light, one dark, one light, one dark. It's not really a formula, just mixing them up as much as I can. Let's put one more light one in. Don't wander away from that split stitch edge and you'll change the shape of it. So nice and tight to the edge. I'm going to put two of those in. Then I think we may just continue on in the dark colour. So I'm just going to park that one out there. I think I've finished with it. I'm not going to finish that thread off just in case I haven't. I'm going to carry on in the dark and see what that looks like. And of course you can do as many colours as you like. You can start with lighter at the top if you want to. I do always suggest starting in the middle though, so that sets your angle. If you start at the top, especially in a small shape like that, your angle can go all a bit off. So I do suggest always starting in the middle and working up, then coming back to the middle and working back down. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm just going to go all the way to the bottom in the dark. If you do think, oh that looks a bit stripy and I need another one, 
as I said before, just come and put one in over the top. Don't take it all out back to that point and do it again. Just put another stitch in. I'm all for putting stitches in and not taking stitches out. So just keep putting them in and eventually you'll get there. Might have to start a new thread for that last bit. I think I will. So last few stitches, I've put a new thread in because I wasn't quite going to get to the end. And again, as for the top, don't worry about the shape, just keep following straight stitches, follow the split stitch edge, follow the stitch before, and then just have to decide when to put your last stitch in. So I just think another short one there just to make it nice and round, tuck that needle in really nice and tight to the previous one. There we go, that's him done. So I shall take those through to the back, finish them off on the back. And I left that one there just in case I needed it, but I think I'm happy that that's okay as it is. So I won't um, carry that, I'll just finish, carry on with that. I'll just finish that one off on the back. One little extra trick you can do, just if some of them are sticking up a bit, just get a needle and just stroke them in the direction that they sit, just lightly with a needle. And that will help all the threads to sit down nice and neatly. Give them a little stroke. Take that through to the back so you can see what it looks like. There we go. So that is a nice and neat satin stitch. So we're going to have a look at a particular kind of couching now and this is Bokhara couching and this applies to the pattern that we're going to make when we couch over it. So before I stitch I'm going to draw some lines on. So I'm going to use my Aqua Trick marker. Now you won't see any of this because it's going to get covered so if you want to use a um, permanent pen you can um, or a pencil will be fine. Um, so I'm just going to put some marks on here so just mark the centre. And now you can do any pattern you like with the couching stitches, um, but I shall do like a little chevron one. So we'll do four and the same on the other side. And that will just help me to place my stitches. All will become clear shortly. I'm going to do this in one colour. Now you can change your colour with this as you can with all of the stitches but I want you to see the effect of the couching stitch. I'm just going to do it in the one colour and the first thing I'm going to do is put one big long stitch all the way up in the middle and down at the other end. Now we couch as we go along with this with the same thread so you can't do a different colour couching stitch um, over your thread and then what we're going to do is come up where this line is and we're going to stitch over that. Now the first one will be straight across and I'm only going to couch over it when I get to a line. So I'm going to jump down there and stitch over the top of that. So I'm coming up one side over the thread and down the other side not going through that thread at all. All the way to the bottom. So that's going to have four couching stitches. Now think about that, how far apart they are when, depending on what shape you're filling in. If they're too far apart, the stitches will move. So you need them close enough together to secure that big long thread up the center. Now to carry on, I'm just going to do another one at either side. So I'm just going to come up at the bottom again so I finished at the bottom, so come back up at the bottom and lay another thread next to it. Like so. There's my stitch line. And I'm actually going to follow that line now, so I'm going to do it at an angle. So my stitch is going that way with the line. First one I've done horizontal because it's in the middle. But now my stitches will go that way. So come up on that little chevron that I've marked just to the right of that stitch, that thread there, going over it, not catching that at all, it's up one side and down the other. Just 
Just take your time to bring the thread up in the right place. You want to make sure this background is all covered. So if you need to move that big long stitch, you can. So up and down on each line, we're just going to follow the lines to make the pattern. So we're back at the bottom. So we come back up on the bottom here and we do another long stitch up to the top. Now it goes in at the neck, so we're going to end up with two separate sections, but so far I'm happy that I can keep going. That's just about hitting the side there. So again, just up and down on that line that I've marked. So it really does help to put those lines in so you can see where you're going with your stitches. Although you just follow the one before in a way, so once you've got the first one in, it shouldn't be too bad, but this is just a super extra neat way of doing it. So these stitches are all slanting towards the past stitch now, towards that previous stitch. And then I just want to show you the next bit before I go and fill all of it in. So again, back to the bottom, come straight up on that edge, try and get that shape around the bottom nice and neat. Now if I go all the way to the top, I've gone over the edge of his neck really. So I'm going to stop that right there where it just meets that gold design line. Just come down a bit further. could just get one small stitch in there so just make a judgment as to where it hits your design line and whether you can get that couching stitch in or not you might not be able to that one's a bit tight but I've got to squeeze it in there anyway there we go and then carry on as a separate shape so you'll need to come back to the top and just put another line in for the top one so treat them now as two separate shapes so that's if you're getting narrower and, and wider again And start to see that pattern appear now of my couching stitches. So let's just finish the bottom off first. I'm going just to the top of my gold now and that's the next couching stitch there. So you could change the colour at this point. You could finish this thread off and put another colour on your vertical stitch so you'd have sort of stripes. I quite like the pattern it's making, so I'm going to carry on in this colour and fill in the rest. I'm on my last few stitches on this side now, so just keep going with the shape and the little couching stitches. I can get one more in there. One more couching stitch and then I must remember to go back and finish off his head. So very happy with that shape there. So we'll just make this a little bit round. He's got a dead straight head. So one more stitch up here to make that round. Just get in the couching stitch there, just to make that look even. And there we go. So really pretty stitch because that couching stitch makes this lovely pattern and you can choose what pattern you do. You can have a bit of a play on a piece of paper first and see what you like. You could just go straight across. You can even wiggle the line down. So wherever the line goes is where a couching stitch goes. So just have that in your mind and have a bit of fun with this Bokhara couching. So I've got my pen ready again for this one. I'm going to mark out some sections. So we're going to do blocks of colour in different colours and shade through them. Um, but it's really helpful with this one to mark on where they start and stop because you have to be quite precise about that. So I'm going to do five colours. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So I've made those even. 
don't have to have them even, you can change them if you want to, but that line is quite important that that's straight because we have to follow that line. So I'm going to start, I think at the bottom, and work my way up. So I'm going to go dark up to light. Start my first colour in this space here. This is the colour this one's going to be. So I'm going to come up on that line, and down at the edge. Just find it's neater to go down because the edge is exposed, it's on its own and we want that to be a nice shape. I'm going to go down onto that edge because I think I can do that more neatly. So then I'm just going to come straight up next to that first stitch and try and come out dead on the line if you can. And this is just straight stitches all the way across straight up and straight back down. Now when we did the satin stitch we angled the needle underneath because we were doing slanted. This is straight now so we're going to come straight up and straight back down. No angles with this one. I just work my way along that shape. So forget anything else that's going on. We just want to come in a straight line there and make a nice curve with the shape at the bottom. So they will get shorter as they go along. I'm just going to keep going all the way to the edge. So when I've got to the end I'm going to come back to the middle and go the other way. So exactly the same. Now it is likely sometimes you favour one side over the other so um, just double check when you're going the other way that that's as neat as the first side. I'm quite happy with how neat that is but now my hands are going to get in the way so I'm going to swap hands which I've learnt through practice, I'm not left handed. I'll just double check that they are starting and stopping in the same place. And I just want to show you another little trick. If you do think, oh, that's not quite as straight as I want it to be, don't keep taking it out. Um, there's a little trick you can do. If you get your needle underneath all of the stitches, push them to the top and just give them a wiggle. And that just brings the thread to the top and just neatens it up a bit. So it kind of just changes the tension a bit, pulls more of the thread to the top and it sits more comfortably and just hides any tiny little errors that you're not happy with. So you can always try that. So I've put my first colour in, that's the hardest one because you've got two um, edges to think about there. So now I'm going to put my second colour in but it's exactly the same as the first now. I'm going to start in the middle. Now what happens here is this stitch needs to go vertical and it needs to share the row of the previous one. I'll just lie that down so you can see. So you don't want a gap between your rows, you want them to butt up nice and neatly together. Don't cross them because that's a different stitch, that's encroaching satin. So you don't want them to cross over each other, they're going to butt up to each other. So straight down. right next to that previous row and it's much easier to go down next to that rather than up. If you come up with your needle you'll push your needle through the other threads and make all sorts of a mess so always go down into that previous row. Keep them straight. Concentrate on this row as well because this is the row that you're going to have to come into on the next row so this needs to be nice and level as well. So not a complicated stitch, but just one a little bit harder to get neat. So just take your time with it. And make sure that you're doing it as carefully as you can so that the rows all meet nice and tidily. So I just want to explain what happens at the edge here. So we're coming up and down um, on a straight line and into a straight line, but at the edge, the shape of his body goes out. So we're just going to follow that at the top while still going into this same row at the bottom. So just do what you need to do to follow the shape, otherwise we just end up with rectangular blocks. So I'm coming down on the right hand side each time, just as we did along the bottom really. But they're still vertical stitches, they're still going into the top of that previous 
row until I think that that shape is nice and round. So I'm happy with that. So it's back to the middle and um, we'll go the other way and do the same and then I'll continue up and fill in to the top. So on my last colour now, to the light green. So I've got the top shape to think about now. So ideally you want to go down on that edge but I don't want to come up on this one. So I have to be super careful now that I get this nice and neat at the top as well. The top's always more noticeable than the bottom, by the way. So just take extra care with your stitches here, but still vertical, still going into the top of that previous row. So we get our blocks of stitching. This head's round, so I'm going to go down into there and then put one extra stitch on the end just to make a nice round shape. Just going to come in a bit higher there like so, back to the centre, coming straight up with your needle when you're trying to make these shapes nice. Last few stitches. Again, one on the side to round off his head. Like so. Right, I'm quite pleased with that, if I say so myself. So just get the knot off. We'll finish the thread on the back. I'll just turn the frame over and weave that underneath. And there we have a nice bit of peacock block shading. Got a little ginger helper with me <laughs> now, um, but hopefully I'll stay where he is and not disturb me because I'm going to explain long and short too. Now we have a couple <laughs> spoke too soon well i'll just carry on and we'll have a couple of videos on long and short technique where we do um, a pansy and um, that goes quite in depth into how to shade the through the colors <laughs> can I have my threads back to shade through the colours, um, lots of different colours, but I just want to show you the long and short stitch um, this time round. Um, and I'm just going to use three colours and I'm going to do it in three strands. So normally you do it in one strand. If you do something like a flower, so you can get lots of detail in. But I just want to show you the stitch and how you can use it to quickly fill in an area. So this is the area that I'm going to do. So I've worked a split stitch around it already as I did for the satin stitch. And that will give me my nice smooth edge to work to just gonna keep going. So um, I've worked it in blue, but that's gonna be my middle color, but I'm actually gonna start in green. Um, you can change the color of your split stitch if you want to, but as long as you cover it up, it shouldn't matter in theory what color it is. I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up. So first row is pretty easy. So come up in the middle, about that far away and over that split stitch edge. So we're going to cover the split stitch edge up completely. Now that's my long stitch. I'm going to do a short stitch, which is actually not short, it's just a bit shorter than the long one. And down over the split stitch edge. And then I'm going to do a longer one. So just vary the length basically. So um, they don't start and finish in the same place. If they start and finish in the same place, you get more of the block shading like we've just done. Um, and you can see lines between the colours. You don't want that. So just vary the lengths of the stitch for this row. And I'm coming down over that split stitch because that's much neater. We're coming up the size a little bit. So I'm just going to make these stitches a bit longer. I'm just going to fan them out a little bit as I go around just because of the shape of him. He's got a nice round body at the bottom. So just coming in closer at the top, a bit wider at the bottom and you can just see those stitches start to turn. You don't want to do that much. And I'm just going to stop there think we'll cover the edge of that in the next row so back to the center 
put some more of those stitches in again varying where you come up and down I'll do a shorter one I think nice and tight against that split stitch along the bottom so we get a nice shape around the bottom getting a bit longer because we're moving up the shape now if I keep going the same length I just go straight off the edge and it looks a little bit um, a little bit blocky when we come to do the next row so I'm just going to go up the edge a little bit with the shape of the peacock looks a bit more natural it's still a long stitch so the more you stagger the more nicely the rows will blend together just fanning them out a bit around the side to get that nice shape there's the first row, so I'll finish that thread off. Cut that and the starting knot off. And then I'm going to bring in my second colour, so I've got this blue colour. Now when you change colours, that's when it starts to show. So you really want to make sure you blend these colours nicely together. Now. For this row we're going to go the other way so we went um, out of the fabric down over the edge we're now going to work upwards we're going to come out of the stitches and look how far back I'm coming a good halfway into that previous row and we're going to go this way now nice long stitch now really these stitches are now all the same length but I'm going to stagger where I bring them out so the second one I've brought a little bit higher up so I'll finish it a little bit higher up and then I'm going to come right down into here, right back into these green stitches. Each row is half covered by the next row, so don't be frightened to come right back into them there. Then out of the end of that, a bit higher up, right down into here. And you'll start to see the effect that that has. It really blends the two colours together. You can see the angle I'm going now. I'm just not going in over here. I'm always heading to the top, but just angled them slightly now to match the shape. If I just go straight up, it doesn't look very natural. If you imagine his feathers, they'd come in a sort of nice shape. So not too much. And then squeeze one more in there. And then at that edge, I'm just going to go the other way. Cat stretching himself out, taking all my stuff with him. So just when I get to the edge, I've come up and I'm going to go back down over the split stitch edge. It's always over that split stitch edge when you get to the edge. So then I'm going to come back to this side and do the same this way. So right back down into these green stitches always head to the top don't head over here because that won't make sense so the stitches should always stay within the shape that one will be a bit lower down this one will be a bit higher up you can see how quickly i'm doing this yes i've done it a lot but i'm not being too precise if i did it again it would look different it's just that principle of staggering the ends of those stitches so that they really blend nicely and as with all the other ones that we've done in this video you can add extra stitches in if you want to if you think you haven't quite got one in the right place you think oh there's a bit too much green there you can go and put a blue stitch in over the top so really easy to fix long and short to change my thread because that's getting a bit tangled so 
going to do the same colour again, so another row of this and then I'll put a darker one in at the top. So you can put as many colours as, as you like. If you want to mark the rows and the angles in you can do that just lightly with a pen or a pencil. Just finish off this side here because it needs a couple more stitches. got to the edge so I'm going to just come up on the inside of that split stitch down over the edge and that will make a nice shape to the edge. Okay so that's the second row now I'm going to do the third row so back up in the middle always start from the middle halfway down into that previous row each row is going to get covered by half so always have that in your mind when you're doing this straight up the middle nice big long stitch. Now it's a little bit easier when you're doing the same colour because it blends and you don't see the difference so much but try and keep that rhythm going so stagger where you come in and out. If you come in and out in the same place you'll get a ridge across it and it will be noticeable even if it's the same colour so higher up, higher up there, low down here. So work your way along and you can go back to the center, go the other way, come high up in the stitches here, low down here. You can see how beautifully that's all blending together. So last change of color now into a dark blue. So this is going to show up quite clearly so again out of that previous row now I'm going to go down over the top of his head so think about that nice smooth edge at the top so you really want to stagger this colour now so that it blends in so we're going to come right down into this blue stitch now Going up to the edge, then go back to the centre, and go down the other side. Come right down here now. Don't be afraid to come right back into those previous stitches. short one up here one more coming on the inside of that split stitch going down on the outside to try and make that nice curve of his head like so and I'm just going to step back and have a look I think I might just put a long one in this side here now if you want to add one in in the middle I suggest the easiest way is to split the stitch to so come through the actual stitch and I'm going to just put one in there just bring that thread down into there and I'm going to slide it between look at the angle of that stitch really flat slide it between those and it should look if I pull it down tight fairly seamless but I haven't just added that in over the top right Can you not do that please thank you back to sleep so I think that's enough stitches, I'm going to leave it, it's easy to fiddle with this one. So I'll finish that thread on the back, let's cut the knot off so you can see what that looks like. So that's a fairly whistle stop tour of long and short, so do check out the pansy videos if you want to know about this stitch in much more detail. But just wanted you to see how nicely that looks to fill in these solid shapes, you can get some really beautiful shading and do something quite realistic with a long and short stitch. So I hope you've enjoyed that little look at these stitches for solid shapes and that's given you some ideas about where you can use them in your own embroidery and if you've got an area that you want to fill in what you might be able to do with it. Don't forget we've got the Peacock design for free on the website if you want to have a go at these yourself. Do check out all our other videos, we've got loads and loads now, well over 230 videos so hopefully there's something in there to inspire you um, and do give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video as well and that will help more people to see it.
So we'll see you in the next video.